The term yellow fever is sometimes used to describe a strong preference or a fetish for dating Asian people. There are many people across the world who are addicted to watching adult movies and paying for adult services. So it's no surprise that there are many expats who are living in Southeast Asia who also experience the same addiction. The outcome that I hope to accomplish today is to help you as an expat if you've fallen into this trap or you've become addicted. Going on Tinder is fine, having one night stands is fine but if you're on the apps 24 7 if you're meeting different women all the time and you're feeling depressed as hell dude this is for you imagine for a moment that you're a single guy who's found out how different life can be in a place such as thailand the philippines or cambodia and so you start to research the place. You want to know where is the best place to live, how much will this cost you, and what kind of lifestyle will you live? After some time, your natural instincts kick in and you start to wonder, well, what about dating? So you start to watch YouTube videos about dating in Asia, you check out Reddit and other social media sites. After some time, your curiosity may extend to the sexual side. As the weeks turn to months, you start to get a picture of a Asian women in your mind. So finally the day has come when you leave the US, the UK, Australia and you fly over to start your new life. But after everything you've seen and heard, you are not content on just one woman, why would you be? But as you watch more videos, you meet more women and you swipe more and more, you don't feel happy and you start to wonder what's wrong. After all, you have got everything a single man would want, so what's going on? What I've just shared with you is a very common story that affects many expats who are living in Asia. I hope that this situation isn't too familiar to you, but unfortunately, many expats find themselves caught up in this situation. Single men from all walks of life can arrive in places such as Bangkok and Manila and quickly find themselves loose in a sea of dating options. Just look at dating apps, a $6 billion industry. These platforms have given expats the ability to amass a fan following faster than Superman can put on his cape. Who needs a phone booth when you can just swipe your way to becoming a star? You may have also come across traditional dating in Southeast Asia, and this is arranged marriages, male order brides, that kind of thing, and these have all been well documented. But not only do companies profit from hijacking our natural impulses, but so do individuals. One of the crazes that has swept Asia in recent years is the popularity of OnlyFans. Not only is the online world a sexual minefield, but you also see it in the streets, from massage parlours to late night karaoke bars. As a single man, there is only so much you can take before you say, what the hell? And after all, nothing really bad can happen, right? One of the biggest problems that expats face is the negative effect to their mental health. The desires we are talking about are natural, so it's no surprise that an unbalance can lead to deep depression, anxiety and suffering. There is also the problem of wider society. The thing is, many corporations have discovered the secret, that more often than not, it's much easier to sell someone something that they naturally desire. Think about it like this. It's much easier to sell donuts to the wider public than it is to sell broccoli. Similarly, it's much easier to sell a course on how to get laid than it is to sell a course on how to be a nice, decent person in the community. But anyways, let me tell you a quick story. I was recently speaking to a guy from Canada who looked to be in his 40s. He was telling me that he just can't settle down as there is too much choice. He lives in Cebu City in the Philippines and he said that there are so many single Filipinas who are just his type and he can't make up his mind. In some ways, he is right. There is a lot of choice. It's just how it is in Asia. The gender ratio is low in most countries and there is a large community of transgender, which I'm guessing could maybe impact the percentage of single women. I'm not totally sure about this one, but you get the point. The reality is that simple pleasures are everywhere. Expats can get so addicted to these pleasures that it affects their mental health, it affects their relationships, 
relationships and it can even get them stuck in a trap of continuously chasing pleasure. Even if you want to escape, the pleasure has been used for so long that it becomes a poison. So the question is, will you kill the poison or will you let the poison kill you? Over the years, I've been fortunate enough to meet many locals from countries such as Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam and the like. I share what I know with you, but there are some topics that are not always appropriate. One of these topics is how some expats talk to women online in Asia. I can't say exactly because of YouTube's guidelines, but the stuff I hear is messed up. The thing is, these women get these kinds of messages all the time, tons of them. You know, I always think that expats don't speak about this with our friends. We speak about how hot or how cute she is, but we don't tell our friends the messages that we send. If we did, they'd probably say, dude, don't send that, it's creepy and you'll end up on a Facebook group or a Reddit post with your photo and message all over it. You also have to take into account content creators. Most YouTubers know what kind of content leads to clicks. Most of the time, the videos that blow up are from YouTubers who are interviewing sex workers or some crazy story like that. Most videos interviewing a nice 40 year old woman, for example, who is looking for a boyfriend, won't blow up. It's just how it is. But the problem is, what we see can impact our perception, and some videos can at times perpetuate stereotypes. Looking at my video retention, my retention drops when I try and explain the full picture. But when I talk about stereotypes, scams, gold diggers, all that kind of thing, my viewership spikes. If I know this with only a small chance, channel, you can bet the bigger channels know a lot more. Why did you move to Asia or why will you? What are the real reasons that you became an expat? We get lost in the rhythm of simple pleasures but somewhere you know the real reason. If you find yourself addicted to watching naughty videos, meeting countless women and engaging in other undesirable activities, the problem is not that you must do them every day but rather you cannot imagine your life without them. In other words, if you are unable to live your life without these activities, activities, you may be relying on them as a crutch. Those caught in this position may attempt to stop engaging in one addictive activity, such as stop sending sexual messages, while indulging in other behaviours that increase their addiction. You must reprogram yourself at a fundamental level and let go of the fear and the need for this thing in your life. Are you afraid of getting close to a woman because you're worried that she's going to cheat on you or she might be a gold digger? You might be surprised to find out that many people can directly connect a fear with their addiction. It's important to recognise if you are in the midst of an addiction. It's natural to experience urges but it's essential to understand the root cause. Is it because of external factors like boredom, fatigue or loneliness? Or is it something deeper like feeling incomplete or unworthy. Perhaps this addiction is a way of filling a void or it could be linked to past traumas, shyness, low self-confidence or self-esteem issues. You may enjoy chasing after women, spending hours swiping on the dating apps, or meeting every woman under the sun, but is it really what you want? You have complete control over your thoughts and actions, and it's up to you to decide what happens next. While it's important to maintain a balance in your life, it's equally important not to allow yourself to become a slave to your urges. Ask yourself, what is it that I truly desire? Is it a meaningful connection with someone, or is it just a temporary thrill. Sure, chasing after endless women may bring a brief high, but what about the long term? Is it really fulfilling? It's okay to indulge in simple pleasures from time to time, but don't allow them to consume you. Balance is key and you have the power to create the life that you desire.